absolutely. I think that's the, probably the big take home from this particular drug and particular pathway. Uh, the, the, the research of Regeneron on this pathway goes way back to the 90s and when the company had a, a different molecule that, that never got funded back in those days and, and didn't go anywhere. And then we saw following up studies with IL-4 ligand blockers by themselves and IL-13 ligand blockers which didn't really work, particularly in asthma, uh, but also in AD. And eventually when Regeneron came and focused on the receptor, it's a particular IL-4 receptor. It's an elegant mechanism because you can block both IL-4 and, and, and also interleukin-13 by targeting one receptor. So that was very good. And then, you know, as we started to dig more and more into each of uh, the indications, we, we realized that um, the IL-4 and 13 pathway is elevated in many, many atopic allergic diseases. Now, of course, we know them today as type 2 diseases. This, this, the, the science has come a long way just in the last nine years I've been working in the area. And uh, th this drug is positioned, we think, very nicely to meet most of those uh, um, indications. But, and potentially. Now this is I think no longer just a, a hypothesis because we have an indication for atopic dermatitis driven by IL-4 and 13, uh, uh, for type 2 asthma um, driven by IL-4 and 13, and now CRS with nasal polyps. We always felt that would be the, the real proof of the pudding because you have essentially three different conditions in the same patient, all of which we think are type 2, and we now are type 2 now because dupilumab works for all of them. So what is now clear is that these are central pathways in many different diseases. So we're exploring others. We're going to explore other respiratory conditions, we're going to explore other dermatologic conditions, we're looking at food allergy, uh, peanut allergy, um, eosinophilic esophagitis, all of these studies are ongoing at, at Regeneron at the mo and Sanofi at the moment.